this video is to describe my process that led up to me getting approved here in Australia for FMT, um, what it was like doing the first one and all the gut issues that I had leading up to this. So I wanted to tell a bit about the story. Um, ever since I was younger, I had a ton of problems with my gut and my skin and it just gradually got worse as I got older. The causes of this, I think, is because I had a cesarean birth from my mother. I think that's a, a big issue um, initially because you don't get the microbiota because these, um, these issues that I had started pretty young. I remember having pretty severe issues with dairy and skin issues when I was around you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, and that's when it all started. From there, it just got worse and worse. As I got older, I started to develop um, histamine intolerance. Uh, the skin just gradually got worse and worse. If I simply eat a vegetable or a fruit, my whole face is just covered in red. So I get red eczema and rosacea, I think. And then as I got well into my 30s, um, there, was, there became a lot of mental health issues associated with diet. So if I eat carbohydrates, I get migraines. I get about six or seven days worth of severe depression, anxiety, panic attacks, insomnia, just from eating carbs. So I'm essentially on a kind of modified carnivore diet where I eat uh, chicken, beef, fat, some coconut oil. Um, and yeah, it's just things like that. I, I can't really eat plant matter. The only thing I seem to be able to eat is just the fiber-free low-carb um, coconut yogurt. So it's something to do with carbohydrates, plants and fiber and things that, that really messes me up. Um, if I was to eat a pizza, for example, I would be pretty much dysfunctional for about six or seven days, you get very severe depression um, and anxiety and panic attacks and things like that. The skin lasts about the same, the same time. So I'm essentially in ketosis 24-7 um, because I have to be. I got used to it after about a month or two. It... it it starts getting a lot better. It takes a long time, but a month or two in, you start feeling better and the skin's better, the energy's better, um, the sleep is better. All the problems that you start out with just tend to get a lot better after a month or two into ketosis. Most people don't really last that long, so it, it's hard to see. I'm somewhat motivated because if I don't eat like this, it ruins my life, essentially, is what it comes down to. Uh, I get, you know, tons of ADHD symptoms if I eat carbs and plants. And then if I'm in ketosis, um, I don't have them. I Very minimal. I can focus for long periods of time. So it's like night and day. It's, it, it saved me, this diet. But then um, there were various points in my life where I took antibiotics, as we all do. Um, and you could see each time I took them, things got worse and they just never got better. No matter what I did, I tried, you know, I tried fasting for 14 days. I tried a five day dry fast. I tried all the different types of medications and tests and naturopaths and doctors and, and whatever. I spent tens of thousands of dollars on, on seeking answers, but I just couldn't find one. Eventually I got dry socket. So that's when a tooth is removed and the socket itself doesn't, it doesn't create a, a, a blood clot. So you're in about one to two weeks of severe pain. It was some of the worst pain that I've ever experienced in my life. Just this raw nerve, 24-7, it doesn't go away. It was really unbearable. So leading up to that, I was put on a bunch of antibiotics, some very strong ones called Augmentin. I was put on two back-to-back. -back, um, I think it was back-to-back. -back. Anyway, it was two... I think it was two courses of Augmentin in between. That was a course of Amoxicillin. And ever since then, I just had diarrhea for a month. It was water just coming out. Each time I'd eat, just a pile of water. And I just thought it was the antibiotics and it would go away, but it didn't. Went to the doctor, got tested, and I had C. diff. This experience of completely losing, essentially it felt like I completely lost gut function. It was finished. My gut just couldn't function anymore. It got worse over the months where I would, if I was to eat any fiber, the pain that would go throughout my body, I had mental health problems, I had pain through my chest, my stomach, my groin, my legs. 
it was it was extreme. I, there were times where I thought I was going to die, and the medical system just simply cannot fix this easily. They cause it with antibiotics, but they cannot fix this this um, this infection in the stomach. I was put on vancomycin, which damaged my ears a little bit. I was put on flagell, uh, which again I have the same issue with my ears. So I eventually I said no more. There has to be another way. I tried various different probiotics with with different ways of eating the diet. Eventually, I rested on eating a carnivore diet, but I would add um, psyllium once a day because it's not absorbed. And then I would add um, lactobacillus rhamnosus, LGG, which is the first probiotic that they synthesized in the 1980s. So I added that. And that did help with the diarrhea, but I still tested positive for C. diff. Whenever I remove the amoxicillin, it would just be diarrhea again. So it's, it's, it's obviously unsustainable in this, in this sense. So I've been like that for about six months, on and off different pro, uh, antibiotics, experimenting like crazy. I cannot fix it. I can see why. I think I read somewhere that if you get this and you're over 60, you've got a, 60, a 50 or 60% chance to die within a couple of months. And I definitely understand that because this C. diff is no joke. I cannot get rid of it. The medicines that they use to get rid of it can damage you. Vancomycin, flagell, these are severe medicines and they are no joke. They damage your ears. They damage your body. The side effects from these are awful. It's nearly just as bad as the disease, but but the justification is, is that the disease can kill you, so you just accept whatever damage this medication causes. This, for me, is is ridiculous. So in the US, it looks like you can get FMTs a lot easier, especially if you have C. diff. Here in Australia, it's not as easy. I had to go, I had to contact someone on Facebook who no longer did it, who then referred me to someone, and then I had to get a doctor to refer me to them. So anyway, eventually I found the FMTs. It is, it is a legal place that does it. It's incredibly expensive. It cost me over $3,000. I had to go down to a, a city here, Melbourne, from Brisbane for the night to get these things, put them in a cold thing, bring them back on the plane. But essentially, I went down and I got these tubes. They're about, I don't know, a foot long, a bit less, um, full of someone else's fecal matter. Quite disgusting. But it was frozen. These people have been extensively um, studied and researched and stuff to make sure the cream of the crop of health. And... I brought back 10 of these with me. It cost me, like I said, over $3,000 to do this, $500 a pop, plus all the travel and, and there's other uh, things that go along with them that you take. But essentially why I'm making this video is to tell you that I just took my first one. The process was somewhat disgusting, as, as you can imagine. If any of you have done an enema, it's like that, but you keep it in. Um, it's not fun, but, you know... It has to be done. So it's been about an hour since I did it, I think, maybe a bit less. Um, I just straight away when doing it, I kind of felt nauseous. My stomach went a bit weird. I feel like my head's spinning a bit. There were some strange things going on in the body when I did it. Um, I do realize that it's very early. I don't, I'm not going to notice any difference yet. But, I mean, this is pretty much the last resort for me. So... As I keep doing these, I'm supposed to do two of these things once a day for five days straight. Every one of these I do, I'm going to make a video after just to guide, just to tell you guys how it is, if it's worth it, what I'm experiencing. They say it, it'll fix the C. diff. They said they've never had a time when it hasn't. They say it can fix a lot of other things too. So skin issues, histamine issues, you should be able to eat more. Diff I should be able to eat different types of food, IBS, um, you know, dairy, pretty much a lot of the things it, it can fix. So I don't know what to think at the moment. Um, I'm just going to keep going with what I'm doing, see see how it goes, and I'll make a video after every time just to show you guys what it, what I'm going through and, and maybe it can help people out there who has have C. diff or who just want to heal their gut issues. My life with these gut issues essentially has just completely ruined a big portion of my ability to enjoy life um so i'm sure anyone who comes to this channel is in a series in a, in a similar place so 
if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, otherwise, I'll talk to you again tomorrow after do the second one. Hopefully, we have some kind of positive benefits from today's one. We'll see how we go. Cheers, guys.